Welcome back to the Crochet Karate. So, my friends at yarnspirations.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Today, we're going to work on this graphic knit pharaoh hat. And what we have here is a really kind of combination of cool things. And so, this is Karen and Pantone yarn. It came in the braid. It's now discontinued. Um, but what I wanted to do is try to look at this pattern. Some friends donated me some yarn back. And I just took the packaging and I labeled A, B, C, D, and E. So, I'm going to use these colors instead of here. So what I did is that I marked on the stitch key here what my colors were going to be. So I looked at it and basically guessed the color um, for the particular pieces so that I could just look at it visually. And what I have to do is that I have to start and do this pattern to do the brim. So I'm going to show you a generic tutorial on how to knit in the round. And what you need to do is with the color A, you're going to start and you can do a twist and transfer method in order to do that and come all the way around. I used uh, my knitting needles here are short tips. And so you wanna use these knitting needles. And so you gotta use two different sizes. The first size that we're going to use, you'll see it here on the pattern, is going to be a five and a half millimeter. And then the size of the bigger one is going to be a six millimeter up here. And so once we get the brim done, we're then going to switch to the larger set of needles. I think due to my tension, I used the color A, but I'm almost out of the yarn. And so I did uh, rounds number one through 11. So once you get those rounds done, you're then going to work with the body of it, but I don't have any more A left. And so I'll have to use just a little bit of a secondary ball here that I will pull this out later. The other thing that you have to think about is that once you get this brim done, you're just gonna complete rounds number one through 11, and those will be knit three, purl one, knit three, purl one, and you'll do that around, and then you just keep doing your round in the same way, and you'll end up with this beautiful ribbing effect. So welcome back, and hopefully you have it done. I have mine done. I've also had a beer since I've done this too, so if I'm sounding a little loopy, I may be stitching under the influence, but we'll just keep it between us friends. I don't think that's illegal. So what we have here, well, if I make a mistake, I'm gonna hurt myself later. So what we have here is that we have the 11 rounds done. So these three rounds that you see here, don't do those because it ends up looking out of place like this. If you look at the sample, that doesn't exist. It doesn't exist that far down. So we're gonna ignore those set of instructions and we're gonna jump right to the charting. So you need to download this chart if you want to follow it because I'm just going to show you how it's done and then you can do it on your own. What I did is I took my um, Karen and Pantone and I, the black wasn't a part of the original one but I pulled it from another one because that's what I really wanted and then I pulled the other four colors from the same braid and then I have it here. So I just put that stapled out so I can always reference it. So we can see that the color formation is here. So the green here is the black. So we're gonna continue with black for two more rounds. I've already introduced a secondary, a little mini ball that came from a secondary um, Karen and Pantone uh, braid because I don't know how that worked, but anyway, we'll just work it. And what you have to pay attention to the most is what we're about to do requires you to be loose. Now that I've had a beer, anything is possible. So um, we're going to begin to continue. So everything is always in sets of four. So you'll do the first one black, the next one is, well, whatever color you decided. The next one is B, and then boom, boom. Remember, it's in sets of four. So As we begin the tutorial today in doing the color changing, I'm going to insert another video. During the production of this one, I learned some new skills called two-handed two-color knitting. I'm going to put that in this tutorial, which will come up next. I strongly urge that maybe you should practice this uh, particular concept in order to push your skills even further. You'll be able to change the colors much faster. And once we get the tutorial moving again, you're gonna notice that I'm gonna drop one yarn and then bring up the other and etc. You can go either way, as long as when you drop the yarn uh, and you're using the same hand for both that you watch your tension. The new skill that I'm about to show you actually solved that for me so that I don't ever have that problem of the floaters being too tight and behind. So you can do what you need to do. This is the knitter's journey at the end of the day. So let's keep on moving in today's tutorial. Oh my God, I gotta show you this. This is mind changing. Forget the long intro, let's get right into it. This is witchcraft, I'm sure of it. So this is our concept. We're going to be knitting with two strands exactly at the same time. So you're going to knit with your right hand and then when you're ready for the other color instead of dropping it you can just go right on in and then just force that one through like this and so you're technically knitting with two strands so let me show you how this works 
This is the exact same pattern. This is me dropping one yarn and then picking it up with the same hand and wrapping it. I'm way too tight. This adult size will not fit an adult. It's way too small. So the benefit of learning what I'm about to show you is evident within the stitch work itself. So tip number one, put in the right hand the yarn that will be used most often. So for example, say you had cream, 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 and then the off color here, put this in your right hand because it's used more. If it's every other one, it won't matter so much. I've also been told online that if you decide that you wanna put cream into your right hand, always knit with the cream in your right hand and whatever color that you decided to do with your left, always keep that also as the left because the stitch work looks slightly different uh, because of that. So it'll be more consistent looking. So let's put the yarn uh, in our right hand, and this is how I do it, and I will show you slowly. First of all, you're going to just grab up your pinky, and you're going to wrap around and come up on the inside of your hand. I will demonstrate several times so that you can follow along. Then you're just gonna pull up and put your finger, your pointer finger, in between. If you wanna hold it any other way, please be my friend to do that. Let's do it again. So just grab with your pinky and rotate and bring it up on the inside of your hand and let your, your pointer be the one that will guide the yarn onto the knitting needle. Okay, last time. So wrap and on the inside and put like that. If you're a knitter and you've never crocheted before, Put this into your hand as if you were a crocheter. So what you would like to do is just raise up your pinky and sneak the yarn in over top of the three fingers like this. Let this go in between the, the bend and your crease there. And just using your middle finger, your driving finger and your thumb just pinch onto these needles here. And therefore, they're in this formation. So let's go through this one again. So dropping it, raise up your pinky, slide under. Okay. Turn your hand over and using your driving finger and your thumb just to hold the work. And keep both of these two fingers free. So one final reset, so everything's out. So grab your yarn, so just wrap and come on the inside and over, and then grab this one like that. And so now let's begin to knit. With the white yarn first or whatever color you decided or whatever sequence, you just go on in and you use the white to wrap over. This is tradition, traditional English method. And you do that and you're gonna go up. So instead of dropping this yarn and then grabbing this one with this hand, you were just gonna go into the same stitch for a knit stitch, but you just literally use your finger, push up, and it will stay on, and you pull it through like that. So you're gonna go into the next one, wrap, and knit. And this one that you may not be used to, you're gonna go on in, and just use your finger just to push it up a little bit and then just bring it through. You're pushing up just enough to provide the tension to stay on the needle. So you can go with the white, wrap, through, going into this one, and just kind of push up and through. So what I wanna do is that you may not have the luxury of changing out your tips, but if you can change out your tips and unscrew them to change the size, then that will be very helpful. Chances are you're gonna to have to use another circular of the same of, a, of the six millimeter, and that will be a US 10. Am I right? I'm right. So we're going to continue. I'm just gonna take off the stitch marker that is currently here, and we're gonna do the first round that you see here. So the first stitch will be black, the next one or the, is gonna be A, and the next stitch will be B, and then the next two will be A. So A is the first color that you're working with. So we're gonna get ready, and I'm going to use a different needle that is bigger, and I'm just gonna shift this down 
like that, and then just start knitting here. So let's begin to do that next. So I don't want my balls to be in the same location. I want the one being over here and the other one over here. It's easier to grab the difference. And I wanna just take this yarn here and get ready, just loop it like so, so don't put any slip knots on that thing. So let's begin the first round using the secondary one that is bigger. And you're going to knit the first one and it's gonna be with the color black. So just keep your yarns organized. And so you're just gonna to toss over and knit the first one. So you're just gonna basically transfer everything that is currently on this cord onto this new one. Now, the next one is going to be the first time you're introducing a secondary color. So just stick in your needle and hold and loop the other yarn. So you're gonna want the other yarn coming from this location because it's a lot easier, so, they, so it's easier to grab and just loop it around the needle and pull through. Now, Here's the trick. So I've just done this before, and now this is my second attempt. I wanna make sure when I pick up one that, ex ex that exists, I don't wanna pull it too tight because um, it will have no stretch. So if you think you're pulling too tight, you probably are. So just wrap and just be relaxed about it because I was too tight before and now I'm having to redo my work. So just remember that after you change a color like this, the next two are going to be black. But for me, it's easier to remember the sequence in sets of three plus one. So the next one, if that repeats the sequence, so it's gonna be one black. So just remember in this round, there's three black after this color. Then you're going to switch back, okay? And only grab the one leading to the ball. And so you're going to knit, so you're no longer purling. And when you wrap it around, don't be to the point where you're choking it. Okay, so let it just kind of relax. Now the next one is back to black for three more stitches. Okay, so the one that is jumping over, it's called stranding. You don't want it to choke your yarn or to choke the project. You can be tighter in between if you're sharing the same stitches, but the one that is jumping has to be a relaxed. This is also called floating. So you're floating that yarn in behind. And what we're doing is we're transferring everything on the existing cord to the new one as we go. So please do the sequence all the way around. This is round number one. Before I let you go too far, I want you to understand, see how they're coming from two different spots? What I do behind the scenes is that I just kind of wrap it and I do my knit. And this color here, because the ball is over here, I just toss the yarn boom, like this, and then it goes out of the way. And then this one is sitting down in front of me for three. So whatever one is kind of just the one on its own, sometimes you have to do it twice and you'll see it. Just keep the one ball in a different direction. And so once these are done, let it come down and then grab the other one, let it float nicely. Just wrap, knit, and boom, like that. You can get rid of it. So you can do that. And there's other techniques of doing this kind of thing. So this is my own at this time, but I'm sure I'll learn more as I go in the process. Continue, I'll see you at the end of the round. This is still round number one. So I'm coming all the round and I'm just doing my sequence as you know it. So the last two before the ending should be the black or the first color that you're working with. And now you've gone all the way around. So now we've just officially transferred all of the first needle onto the new ones here. And I also wanna put in a stitch marker now so that I can measure my rounds. So we've officially just gone around and we have everything all set and we're going to begin the next round and let's go back to the chart. So back here in the chart, we've just done round number one. So I'm just gonna just cross it out and do the second one. So you can see it's the same sequence. So when you see the black, just match it to the black. And then when you see the other color, just match it to there. So main color, secondary color. So just match exactly what you see. Let's try this. And at the end of this round, I'll show you how to secure some tail ends at that point. So when I was coming around, I was transferring to the new stitches. So just move this one back up. And then you're just gonna match it. So you can see you're going into a black one. So just continue, make sure that stitch marker is in place so you can do that. Then you have this next one. And again, just lightly float them here. And then I'll show you how to secure some tail ends at the end of this one. Okay, so match what you see, and I'll be right back in a moment. 
So I'm coming to the end of round number two, and this is the end of the story for the main color, which is black in my case. So we're going to finish this off. So we're gonna do two things at this point. I'm just gonna move my needles down a little bit. And I'm going to take off the stitch marker because it'll fall off anyway. So you might as well not end it up in that the crease of the couch. And the yarn that is going to the yarn ball, you want to leave it a little bit extra long. We're not ready to secure that tail in yet. But what we can do at this point is that we can secure the first tail in from where the other color came in right here. And if you notice is that it's kind of loosey goosey right here. And that's because this has not been secured in yet. So you need to put these on a tapestry needle in order to fix those. Okay, so you put those on and you're gonna secure it to the inside of your, of your hat. Okay, so when you go to pull this strand, turn it over to the good side just so that you can watch it and see how it's going to pull. So if you pull too tight, the stitch goes missing. So you see it's a little tighter than this one. So just let it, just kind of pull on it and don't pull it too tight from behind. So in behind, all you wanna do is just kinda of tie it so it captures into a knot, but don't put the needle through the project so that it's gonna go in and be visible. Once you pull it through, tie it into a knot. Okay. Once you're happy with it, you can just weave it in just to kind of hide in the tail ends a little bit more. But just don't go to the ends or the outside of the project if you go to do this. And this should be good. So any kind of tail ends that you have, you want to do the same thing. And therefore it looks very similar to how you started. So I want you to continue in the chart. We're going to quickly talk about it and then I'll leave the rest for you. So we're back here on the chart. We've just done round number two. So round number three, you can see that there's a new color. In my case, it's gonna be white olive. And so just how I started this secondary color, I'm going to start it the same way. So basically it's gonna be, on my case, light olive, and then the darker, and then light olive and darker. So every other stitch is a different color. Again, let those floats uh, nicely relax. So continue to follow this sequence all the way up to the end of number 25. Once you have 25 done, then you're gonna come back and meet me and we're gonna go through the shaping of it each um, each uh, row by row or round by round. And that's where we're gonna pick up. So please do all of this right here. And we're gonna be back in just a few moments. Same pattern, same knitting needles. This is the new technique I just learned. And this was the old one. This one is supposed to fit an adult. It won't, it's not very stretchy. This one here is like butter. The th this is the exact same pattern. This is me dropping one yarn and then picking it up with the same hand and wrapping it. I'm way too tight. This adult size will not fit an adult. It's way too small. Here, this is more relaxed and will fit an adult. So the benefit of learning what I'm about to show you is evident within the stitch work itself. And I'm back and now we're ready for the next part of shaping the top. So I've gone all the way to the top here. Now the color that you see here is that the cream is in the yellow, okay, so E. So in the next round, what we want is E only is as we begin to shaping the top. But also what we need to do is that we need to start separating these back to the double point needles in order to start reducing the size. So we're going to be doing that and that's coming up next. So what I have is the double point needles and I'm going to use a total of four to go all the way around and the fifth one is used to be able to use it to knit with. So what I want to do is that I want to break this down into sets that are manageable. So as we begin with this one, shaping the top row one, we are going to knit the first seven and we're only using one color, but we're going to use the double points instead and get everything off of the, the circular. So let's begin and you are going to come around and just knit the first one. And what I would recommend to you is put the stitch marker on the second one here so that you will find it in the future. If you put it on this one, it's just gonna slide off. So you're going to do the first seven. So that was one, two, three, four, five, 
6 and 7. Then you're going to put the next two together. So go into both at the same time and do that. And that was one group of a set. And we're going to add another group to this particular needle before we jump to a new one. So we're going to do the next seven. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Then you are going to put the next two together. Now we're going to be done with this needle. So once we slide this off, slide these halfway down and you're going to grab a new fresh needle from the batch. And now you're going to do the next seven and then put two together and then next seven and then put two together and please continue this all the way around. When you jump over, make sure that the first stitch is tight. So just coming around, so just put this needle in behind. So just come in and just knit as normal. But once you do it, just use this and pull up on it and make it tighter so that you don't see any gapping spaces as you jump these needles. The second stitch is the most critical. It's the last time you have an opportunity to make it tighter. And then after that, it's too late from that point. So what I want you to do is continue again. It's that seven and then put two together. So there's three four, five, six, and seven, and then put the next two together. So keep moving them. On this needle here, we're just going to continue to push up because we're eliminating that out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the next two are two together. Okay, and then do the next seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and then put the next two together. And then this needle is done, and then jump to a new one, and keep doing that all the way around. So I've come all the way around, and I'm just sliding off my very last one here. So each of the needles, there's a total of four of them, will have 16 total stitches. So move everything to the halfway point and your circulars are now done for this project. And now we're gonna to continue to reduce using the double point needles. So for the remaining of this tutorial, I'm going to be giving you verbal instructions and then you can just do what you need to do. So rounds number uh, two and three are both gonna be the same. We're gonna be introducing the color um, B. So in my case, it was the darker uh, color and, and not the black, but it was the next one up. And I'm going to start. So let's begin. So the both rounds are done the same way. So with E, you are going to knit three. So E was the cream color. So just refer to your color charts to do that. So you'll do the first three. And remember your jumping needles, so make sure you pull tight on the first two. So one, move the stitch marker over so you can find it later and do the next one. Okay, so two and three. And then this is going to be the next color. So I've learned this technique in the video production of doing this. So I'm going to just insert in and we'll secure that later, like I showed you at the very beginning and we're gonna push through. Now I'm going to put this into my hands like I had shown you in that demonstration. And I'm going to knit the two just like this. Okay, so you're gonna knit three of the one color and then the fourth one will be the other color. And I need you to go all the way around in the same formation. So here I'm on the, the new one here. So I'm gonna go in and I am just going to push up 
and through, and etc. And please do this same combination all the way around. So knit three with one color, the fourth is the other. So we're now moving on to round number four. We're doing a color change. So E, the color, has been trimmed, and I'm just going to let that hold in the background. And then we're going to introduce the second one. So we're going to keep on the last one that we just put on. Okay, so there's this one. And so we're going to start with D and B on this one. Okay, so B is currently on, and D we're going to reintroduce back. So we're gonna start off and the first one will be a brand new color that you'll slip on, just loop it on. We'll deal with the tail ends later. Get it started. And then move over your stitch marker so you can see when you go around. And then the next one is gonna be the opposite color that you've been working with. So if you wanna position that into your hands, now is a great opportunity to do so. Double points can always be a bit of, uh, of a tricky business concept. So just make sure that if you are struggling that you don't realize you're alone in that struggle. Okay, and we can pull things tighter. We just have to get ourselves started. So we're gonna go to the next one and it's gonna be the original color. So just kind of pull that tighter here. So every other stitch is the opposite color. Just remember that. Okay, and so this one has to be the opposite color that you've been playing with. And I'm just gonna do a few more stitches and then I'm gonna tighten up a little bit. Okay, so I'm just gonna come back and just grab the tail ends from behind and just kind of pull it more snug and therefore it looks more consistent. So go all the way around. Every other stitch is the opposite color of each other. Move over the stitch marker. Don't worry about the length of this. That one you'll fix later. And so with B, you're going to knit the next one. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that into my hands. Okay, it's in my hands and just kind of bring it through. Okay, and now you're gonna to continue to then work the repeat pattern around. So with D, you're going to knit the next two. So one, so you're gonna knit the second one and then you're gonna go back to the asterisk to be able to do the repeating. So it's all still in sets of um, threes. So if you just go into the next one, it's the same color like that. And then this one here is the other color. It's the way they write things that sometimes looks more confusing than it is. So just keep it all in sets of the three. So it's gonna be three of the lighter color. One, two, and three, and then the next one is this color here. And the way that you could easily remember this is that you've kind of ended this strand coming up of this a secondary color, and you're introducing this here. Okay, so it's three of the light color and one of the dark, and you'll repeat that around, and I'll see you at the end of the round. When I last exited the fifth round, I did say at the beginning of that clip that we're doing the six the same way. So after you finish number five, make sure that you do number six exactly the same way. So now that you have it established, you can just follow exactly what you see. So please do this again for number six. Okay, number seven, we are going to eliminate the one color here. So this was the color um, B that we have. And so that'll be gone. So I'll just cut it and leave it off to the side. And we're gonna continue just with the neck, uh, the other color, just for a complete round. I'll just explain it to you. You're going to knit six and then two together, knit six and two together, all with the same color. And please do this for number seven. Rounds number eight and nine are both the same. So you're going to use the color D and knit three, and then you're going to use the color E in knit one. So we have to reintroduce the new a new color for this one. So D is already here on the needles. And so the other color that you'll be introducing then is a new color, which in my case will be cream. So please for rounds number eight and nine, you're going to knit three with the color D and then knit one with the color E and do that. And I'll see you at the end of number nine in a moment. Okay, round number 10 with C knit one and then with E, knit one. So C is brand new, so we have to change over our yarn to that. So just take a look at your 
instructions here and change that. So every other stitch is the opposite color. So please do round number 10. Okay, rounds 11 and 12 are both the same. So you're going to start off with the color C just for knit one. And then the next one will be um, knit one with the color E. And then with C, it'll be knit two. So it just goes in a complete sequence. So just think about everything is in these different sets. Okay, so you got C here and the C2. So there's a total of three. And then the, the fourth one is here. So just make sure that you're keeping in line with that. Okay, so just follow that here for rounds number 11 and 12. So I'm continuing along on my journey. I switched over to three needles, as you can see. The remaining of this hat is no longer going to be changing colors in between anything. So it's going to be solid colors all the way around. For round number 13, what we're going to do is with only the color C, you're going to knit five and then put two together, knit five and put two together, and you're going to do that. And in round number 14, you just have to take that same color and just knit all the way around. Okay, so please do rounds number 13 and 14 with the color C. So we're getting closer to the end. It's seven o'clock on a Saturday night. You know, in my younger years, I'd be like getting all pretty for the bar here. As I'm getting older, my idea of a good time is sitting here with you knitting. So we're going to move on now to the next uh, round here, number 15. With the C, the same color, you're going to knit four and put two together. And please do round number 15. And then we're going to be changing the color for the final uh, rounds after that. So let's do 15, next, knit four, two together. Okay, so we're gonna get rid of this color, so just trim it long so that we can deal with it. I have not been weaving in any of the tails as I've been going, so you might see more open spots, and that's because I haven't secured that. So just make sure that you are aware that that's not finished. Let's do the final three rounds together with the color D with round number 16, knit three, put two together, do that around 17, with the same color, knit two, put two together, and then 18 is knit one, put two together, and then you're going to be left with 16 stitches. We're then going to collect it, and that's where I'm going to bring you up here next, okay? So please do rounds number 16, 17, and 18 with the color D. So now I'm done. Back to the four needles. I keep changing my mind, so I just keep adding and subtracting. Oh my goodness. Okay, so let's get this finally done. I'm happy to get this done. And right where we finished off is, is the end of the line. So we want to start here, go all the way around. So just with this strand, just start collecting with the tapestry needle on the end of the strand. So make sure you just cut that first and then just leave it long enough so that you can do this. And put it inside and through before you remove the needle. You don't have to pull tight, we don't want to, until the end, and then you can remove that needle. And you're going to just go all the way around, the same thing, just put the tapestry needle through, confirm the strand through, and remove the needle. Please do that all the way around. So all the needles are now out, clearly obvious, and you're just going to pull on the strand that you were collecting, and this will pull the whole top closed. So you can decide whether you want a pom-pom. We have videos available on the Crochet Crowd Learning Channel on how to do pom-poms if you want that. And uh, it's a really neat idea. So I like to go across and over. And once I just do it one time, just take your time, don't rush. I can be guilty for that on these tutorials. And then I'm going to go down into the center. So put my hand inside, don't stab yourself. For myself, there's gonna be a lot of un uh, ends that are not taken care of yet. And I'm going to do that at next. So I'm just going to pull that through and I'm going to flip this inside out and you're going to say, oh my God, what were you doing? And so I'm going to secure in all the tail ends later. I wanted to get the main structure done first and we'll talk about that in just a few seconds. And I just want to see where this came out of and I want to secure in the top piece. So this is where it is. And I'm just going to tie it into a knot. So usually in craft shows, if you ever do stuff like this, people like the option to remove a pom-pom. So you can put a pom-pom on that has a bow tie if you want to. And then if somebody's complaining about the, the pom-pom, you can show them that they can take the pom-pom off and still enjoy your hat. And if they still don't buy after they've complained about that, then clearly they didn't want to buy, right? So pull tight. So... All these loose ends we have to take care of and they've always been at the start or ending of, of, of a round. And you can clearly see where it is when you start rotating it around, it's here. 
So these are a little bit looser than they should be. And so what you can do, like I showed you when you did this, is that you just reach in and then you just start kind of just work them piece by piece. Okay, so just keep on working. And so just keep grabbing the strands and just kind of tug on them a little bit and it will tighten down just like you see there. And so just like I showed you how to weave in those, I need you to weave in that and your hat would be then good to go. And so you can see the coloring is absolutely cool and any loose ends, make sure you take care of and please enjoy your new hat. Have a good one and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye-bye. Look what I made. I know I knitted that all by myself. Fabulous. It's for Daniel actually, but love it. Salty dogs. <laughs>